In this session, I will show you a few Linux command line tricks. I have been using some simple Linux commands, but I will show you how to use them like an expert. I am running Rocky Linux release 9.4 on this server. We can use date command to display the current system date and time. System will display this output in a default and standard format. We can use date command with a custom format string to change the output format. Here I have printed the system date and time as following. Year as four digits. Month as two digits. Day of the month as two digits. Two digits for hour in 24 hour format. Two digits for minutes. And two digits for seconds. There are many additional formatting options available. Here are a few more options. We can enclose a Linux command with a backtick or a backquote and suddenly it becomes a powerful option. In this case, output of the date command is passed as an input for the echo command. As you can see here, output of the date command is used as a part of the file name with the touch command. Using this logic, we can create files with consistent names. Similarly, we can run any other Linux commands or scripts and redirect the output to a log file. Using this logic, we can create log files with consistent names. grep is a very popular Linux command. grep can be used for pattern matching. grep stands for global regular expressions print. egrep is an extended grep. Using this grep command we are looking for audit logging options in the Cassandra configuration file. We can use this flag to ignore case and treat both uppercase and lowercase as same. Using these flags, we can include before lines and after lines in the output. In this example, B2 will include two before lines. A2 will include two after lines. When we use the N flag, grep will output the line numbers. If we need to search for multiple strings, then we can use egrep command. We can provide multiple search strings separated by a pipe symbol. We can use egrep command to search for a string in multiple files. Using this command, I am looking for the string java8 in all the options files in the configuration folder. String Java 8 is found in these two files. Using tail command, we can continuously follow the changes made to a file. Using line buffered flag of egrep, we can apply pattern matching search on a continuously changing file. printf is a very easy but efficient command to print strings repeatedly. This printf command will output a dash 20 times. 
notice that it does not print the new line character at the end of line. We can use the echo command which will print a new line character at the end of a line. Not just single characters, but we can also print strings using printf command. We can efficiently output interesting patterns using printf command. This command can be used to print a sequence of numbers. As you can see here, it generated eight numbers very quickly. Xargs command can take any input and convert it to a space separated string. Using sequence command, I have generated 100 numbers and using xargs command, I have converted them to a single space separated string. Using the n flag with xargs, we can specify the max entries for each line. Using this command, I have requested xargs to output 10 numbers on each line. Similarly, we can run any Linux command or a script, extract the required input and using xargs, we can print one word per line. We can use this to our advantage while writing shell scripts. Watch command runs repeatedly at a specified interval and displays the output in a full screen mode. Watch command will run until interrupted by the user using control C or by a kill process. As you can see here, I would like to run a word count on the debug log file. And using watch command, I would like to repeat the word count. Using the n flag, I am requesting the watch command to run at 3 second intervals. Notice that watch will run every 3 seconds and it will execute a word count. Word count output will be displayed here. It will be amazing if we can write for loop or while loop at the command prompt. Let us check those options now. I have a simple shell script. When executed it will print the date and the word count and output will be stored in a log file. We can use a for loop to execute the shell script finite number of times. This for loop will run 8 times. It will print the run count and execute the shell script. It will sleep for 5 seconds. For loop will stop after all iterations are complete. Similarly, we can run a while loop but while loop will execute infinite number of times until interrupted by the user. While loop will start with a sleep for 5 seconds. Then it will print the date and execute the shell script. While loop will repeat infinite number of times until interrupted by the user using control C or by a kill process. I am sure you will love to write for loop or while loop at the command prompt during your future tasks.
Using the sequence command, I have generated 50 numbers and stored the output in a text file. Notice the flag equal with. This has generated the first nine numbers with a zero prefix, making all the numbers in the output to be of the same string length. Using this for loop, I have generated this file. Pause the video for a few seconds to understand the for loop. By the way, we can use the printf command to generate a similar output. Now I have two files, one with year and month, and the second file contains the days. I would like to combine these two files. We can use the paste command This paste command has combined the two input files. Notice that I am using equal to symbol as the delimiter. Default delimiter is a tab. Using this command, I have combined the two input files and using set command, I have removed the equal to symbols then save the output into a new text file. I can get my date entries from my dates text file. Then using this for loop, I can run a touch command for each of my date entries. Above for loop has created all these files. Notice that using simple date math, we can generate these files. This will generate next five dates. Similarly, this will generate previous five dates. This is another simple trick. I often use full time flag to get very detailed time information for files. dd command is an extremely powerful Linux utility. It is also known as disk destroyer. Incorrect use of dd command can erase everything from any drive connected to the system. Be extra cautious while using this tool. We can use this command to create a file. This is the input file. This is the output file. This is the size in bytes. Count flag indicates to create a file with three blocks and size of each block is one KB. Above DD command has created this three KB file. Using this for loop, I have generated these files. Pause the video for a few seconds to understand the for loop. We can create different size files using the BS flag. Notice that I have used two different methods to create large files. First method took nearly 30 seconds to create a 20 gig file. 
However, second method took less than one second to create a 20 gig file. When creating large files, seek flag can make the process extremely fast. DD command is extremely powerful, but use it with extra caution. We all know that man command can be used to read the manual pages or documentation about various commands. Man command will by default display one page at a time. We can press any key to proceed to the next page. In case we want to dump the entire man page for a command without any page breaks, then we can use the P flag. We can also use this technique to dump the entire man page and save the output in a text file. We can use the cat command to display the contents of any file. Number flag is very useful. Number flag will display the line numbers along with the contents of the file. We can use this technique with head or tail commands. CK sum command can be used to print the CRC or cyclic redundancy check value for any file. This is the CRC value. This is the file size in bytes. If we have two files and we are not sure if their contents are same, then we can compare their CRC values to confirm if their contents are same or not. As you can see here, CRC values for these two files are not same. This confirms that contents of these two files are different. We can use diff command to identify the differences in these two files. As you can see here, the value for read request timeout is different in each file. MD5 sum will compute the CRC value using MD5 algorithm. SHA256 sum will compute the CRC value using SHA or secure hash algorithm. By default, Linux has support for many other algorithms. Hope you enjoyed this session. We used some simple Linux commands, but use them like an expert. Explore my Udemy profile for a variety of exciting training courses. Join my Patreon community and support my work. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content.